The Minnesota Legislature hasn't always carried out its important work in this building. Why do we need to change the law? The first Capitol building was built when Minnesota was still a territory in 1853. It was located on 10th and Cedar Streets in St. Paul. However, the first building was destroyed by fire in 1881. A second Capitol building was built two years later in the same location, but the legislature quickly outgrew that. Then in 1896, work on the third and current Capitol building began. Cass Gilbert is the architect of today's state capitol. The building was a marvel of its time, featuring electricity. But electricity alone wasn't enough to provide a well-lit working area for legislators. The bulbs were kind of those low wattage carbon filament bulbs, so they didn't really illuminate a lot of the spaces. To remedy the low light situation, skylights were utilized to shine more natural light on legislators. Throughout the state capitol and especially in the House of Representatives chamber, there's a large skylight and that allows more natural light to come into the chamber to assist the members when they were you know, voting or working on amendments and that type of thing. Inside the House chamber shines the light on how the skylight in the House chamber was dimmed and has once again reclaimed its radiance. Although the skylight is a sight to behold now, there was a time when one couldn't view the fine-looking fixture due to wear. Unfortunately, with skylights, you know, you're always going to get some water coming through eventually. There are reports of these being used on the house floor to catch dripping water, and a report of even one of these being used by a representative to shield himself from a dripping nuisance. It was in the 1960s when metal panels were placed over the outer skylight in an attempt to stop the leakage. Still, water continued to be a problem. It's so sad to see and you come in every day and you look up and there's a little more and we knew something had to be done. Furthermore, the dome had to be covered to accommodate television, a new feature in the chamber that didn't adapt well to the swings of the sun's rays. However, the skylight wouldn't stay covered forever. During the 1989 to 1990 renovation project, repairing the skylight was a top priority. Representative Murphy sat on the five-member House Restoration Committee. She took the lead role on the skylight project, and under her leadership, a new skylight was installed. What type of glass did you put in for the, the dome light? It's really kind of a vinyl thing, uh, just vinyl coloring. Um, and we couldn't decide whether it should be gold or green or pink. But in the end, I decided that this, I had choices, several choices, and we voted. And uh, I agreed that this was probably the best because it goes so well with the lights. Oh, it does. And at nighttime, it looks so good television could also tolerate the new glass. Representative Murphy didn't just fight to reclaim the skylight, but also gave it the royal treatment and made it the crowning glory of the house chamber. And I thought, we've just got to do some little zingy thing on ours. And the rest of the committee and the architect just kind of frowned at that. But if you look up at the skylight now, you can see there's a trace of gold up there. They did let me put a little color up there. When the chamber was built, Cass Gilbert intended for it to be seen under natural lighting. Once again, through the work of the House Restoration Committee, and in particular, Representative Murphy's efforts, his original vision has been realized. You can once again have the natural light flooding into the space. Just like it was when it was first built, the Capitol building, and especially the House chamber, remains a marvel that can be seen in the brilliance and glow afforded by a majestic skylight. Mm -hmm.